Hi everyone, I'm Megan and welcome back to another lab video for Analytics and Decision Sciences 1493 Professional Analytics. In this lab, I will be investigating subs, functions, and event procedures with a main focus on subs and functions. This is part two of three videos related to subs, functions, and event procedures, so I recommend watching part one before this video. I base the material presented today on VBA for Modelers, the fifth edition by Christian Albright, and IV case 9B11E027 by Wei Zia, which you can find on IV Publishing through the link provided below. Please open Excel and follow along as we get started. Subs and functions can be written in a VBA module, worksheet, or workbook. A module is a collection of functions, subs, and global variables written in VBA code, which can be used anywhere and in an Excel file. So opening up Visual Basics, we can just quickly look at everything inside of our VBA project, which is the book four that we are looking at. So we have this sheet, which is sheet one, and then we have this workbook, which is the entire work workbook, so the entirety of book four. So what we can do is we can insert a module. So to do that, we go up to insert and then add a module. And now we can see that we have both a folder for Microsoft Excel objects and modules. So using the keywords public and private, we can define the scope of subs and functions. So public allows a sub to be accessible to all other modules and private forces the sub to only be accessible in the current module. So an example of this is for a public cell or public sub, sorry, we can write sub and then we name the sub. So if we call this squared sum, and then we can put our arguments inside of the parentheses, say, for the exact same example as the last video, we would have x as integer, y as integer, and z as integer. So if we're doing a private, which means that we can only find the sub within module one, it would be private sub squared sum two, because we have to change the name and then inside of the parentheses, we can add any argument. So same thing here, x as integer, y as integer, and z as integer. By default, all subs and functions are public. Therefore, if we were to write this as the following, so if we just copy and paste this and change it to squared three. So if we were to write it just like this without a keyword of public or private, the sub would be public because that's the default. Therefore, if you don't add the keyword, we can use the sub in any module. So an example of this is we can do a factorial computation. So I'm just going to delete these examples that I put here for you as it was just to show how we would define as public or private or not use a keyword and keep it and have it be a default public sub. So if we're doing a factorial computation, we can name the sub n factorial and have n as an integer as our argument. So what we're going to do is we are going to de define two different variables. We're going to have i as long, which is the integer type, but it can take on more values than the integer. And we're going to do the same with j, so that's also going to be long. So to do this, we are going to set j is equal to 1 and n fact equal to 1. So these are going to be the starting points for both of these variables. And then I'm going to run a for loop that is going to multiply an 
updated version of n fact by the current value of j, which we will update in each iteration that the loop runs. So we have for i is equal to 1 to n because we recall up here n is an integer. Then we can write n fact is equal to the current value of n fact times the current value of j and then we will update j by having j equal j plus 1 and then we can close our for loop by using the keyword next i. So then we need to have an output for this sub so we can see what the factorial value is. So if we just create a simple message box where we write the value of n fact as our output after the for loop, that is key because if we were to write this inside the for loop every single time, every single iteration, we would be getting a message box, which is not what we want. So we have to make sure that that is outside of the loop. This will just give us the final value of the factorial. So we can call n factorial by either keying in the following. So we can run a new sub, we'll call this test, and we can call n factorial and put in any value of n that we want. So let's, let's do four. And then we can also do it by writing n factorial Four. So these are just two different ways. If we're using the call keyword, we need to have our argument in parentheses, whereas if we don't use the call keyword, our argument is not in parentheses. So if we run this line by line, when we call n factorial, it goes up to our n factorial, sets j equal to 1 and n fact equal to 1, and then it runs the loop. So it's going to do this four times and then we're going to get a message box of n factorial and then if we keep going it should run n factorial four without the call so it'll do the same thing and we still get a message box of 24. So now what we can do is we can instead of writing a sub we can write a function. And the most important difference in functions and subs is that a function always returns a value. So there are a few different function rules that we have. The first is the data type of the returned value must be declared in the function header. So if we were to use the same fact, the same example, we would have function and fact func, we'll call it, and we'll still have n as an integer. So by rule number one, which I'll repeat it again, the data type of the returned value must be declared in the function header. That means that we must declare n fact func as a data type. So for this example, we'll just call it, we'll, we'll make it double. So the second rule is that the value returned must be assigned to a variable having the same name of the function and this has to be the last line. So what we're going to have is we're going to have our last line equal to n fact func and this is going to be our output. So I'm going to leave that there and what we're going to do is we are going to assign a value to output or we might change that. This is just for us to understand so I'll comment it out. So we're going to use the same idea as last time. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste what we used in the sub n factorial. So we have the dimension of i is long and j is long and then we have j equal to 1 and fact equal to 1 and then we have our loop. So now instead of having a message box as n fact n fact is our output, so we are going to set n fact func equal to n fact. 
So what we should expect here is that the value that we are getting from our end fact func function is going to be n fact, which is the factorial value that we are finding. So when we need to call this, we can use either dot formula inside of VBA or we can call it within the sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to call it within the sheet and then we'll call it in another test function or a test sub, sorry. So if we navigate over to the sheet, we can start writing n fact func and we see that we are given our function here that we can immediately click on and then we can enter 4 and run that to see a value of 24 which is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So the other way that we can do this is we can run sub test 2 which is going to set the value in A2 or sorry set the formula in A2 equal to what we wrote over in cell A1. So if we go back here we can see that we wrote an equal sign and fact func and then in parentheses 4 so we have to do the same thing here so we start Oh, sorry. Accidentally messed that up, so let me just put this back in and fact func. Four, okay. And then back to our example. So when we're writing in the formula here, it has to be the same as what we did in the sheet. So we start with our equal sign, then we call the function, so that's going to be n fact func. And then we enter our n value, which in this example is 4. So if we run this, we can see that in cell A2, we get a value of 24, which is expected. Those were some examples on how to use subs, functions, and their scope, and how we call them. I hope the material presented was useful when using VBA for decision modeling. Please check out part 3 of this video where I investigate events and give some examples. If you liked this video, please like and comment as well as subscribe to our channel. We have more content related to VBA for Decision Modeling in our playlist, so if you're interested in more videos, please check it out. I'll see you in our next video. Bye!